So you're moving to Fort Lauderdale and you're wondering what neighborhoods are gonna fit my lifestyle? What neighborhoods are great for families? So in this video, I'm gonna give you five neighborhoods that were ranked the best in Fort Lauderdale. All right, so welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I cover everything there is to know about moving to or relocating to Fort Lauderdale or the surrounding areas. So make sure you subscribe, tap the little bell to be notified every time I drop a new video. Also, I help a lot of people relocate here from out of state. That's what I specialize in. So if you're thinking of moving to or relocating to Fort Lauderdale or anywhere in South Florida, make sure to give me a call, text or email and I got your back. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the top five neighborhoods in Fort Lauderdale and why you might wanna move there. Now I'm gonna be uh, referring to niche.com and some other public information. So this is not my list, okay? I'm not trying to steer you in any direction. So with that being said, let's get into the first neighborhood, which is downtown Fort Lauderdale. So downtown Fort Lauderdale, the center of the city, basically everything's right outside your doorstep. Downtown's gonna consist of a mix of condos, high-rise rentals, high-rise condos, and some townhomes. Now, the good thing about living downtown is it's very walkable. You've got a variety of grocery stores. Um, there's a ton of shopping, dining, nightlife. Uh, La Sola Strip is downtown. It actually runs from downtown to the beach. So if you're not familiar, that's a very famous uh, commercial street in Fort Lauderdale. Like I said, home of some of the top uh, restaurants, shopping and dining in South Florida. You're only two and a half miles from the beach. So it could be a, a kind of a long walk, but as far as driving goes, you're five minutes. You also have the river walk, which is about a mile and a half long pedestrian walkway. Uh, it's on the north and south side of the new river. And it basically consists of about 10 parks. It's pet friendly. Um, there's some nightlife there, lounges like Salt 7 and the Wharf. There's dining, um, there's some galleries and museums, and it's just an all around great place to get outside. They got a ton of activities there as far as Segway tours. Um, you'll often see yoga in the park, not including the whole calendar uh, of year long activities that they have going on. As far as colleges go, there are a couple colleges downtown. So there's Broward College and then there's the an FAU campus, which is Florida Atlantic University. And as far as living goes, it's, it's about 70% renters compared to owners downtown. And the average rent ranges from about 2000 on the low end for a studio all the way up to as high as about 15,000 for a luxury high rise penthouse in 100 Las Olas. Now, if you're looking to buy downtown, the average condo or townhome starts around three to 400 on the low end and can go as high as 10 to 15 million on the high end for a penthouse in the sky. So this neighborhood's gonna be perfect for anybody who's looking for that fast paced hustle, bustle, Everything is right outside your doorstep with a lot of walkability. If you're looking to be close to downtown, but not necessarily right in the center of it all, let's go to the next neighborhood, which is Sailboat Bend. So Sailboat Bend is more of a suburban neighborhood just west of downtown. And it's known for its mission style homes and bungalows that were built in the early 1900s. So the thing I like about Sailboat Bend is you're adjacent to downtown, but you're still far enough away to where you're not gonna get a lot of the traffic and noise and you're set kind of far back. So it kind of has like a secluded feel to it almost. But like I said, you're right there next to the Himmershi district, which has live music venues, a lot of restaurants, uh, clubs, bars. It can get pretty hectic on the weekends, but like I said, you're still set far enough back to where you're out of the mix, but you're still close enough. Sailboat Bend also has a mix of family-friendly restaurants, local coffee shops, and then there's also some trendier spots like uh, the Riverside Cafe, which is a popular little eatery over there in, in Sailboat Bend where you can grab a quick lunch and beer. Now, Sailboat Bend is also home to the police station in Fort Lauderdale, so as far as safety goes, I would say you're pretty good there. And the public schools actually have a B rating. And so again, much like downtown, there are more renters than owners here, and the average rent for a one bedroom is about 1,600 a month, while homes and townhomes range from about 400 to the mid 400s to just under a million for a waterfront property. Another great thing about Sailboat Bend is you're right off Broward Boulevard, which is pretty much a straight shot to the highway. So you get onto Broward and you make a left and you're less than five minutes, maybe five minutes with traffic to the highway. So this makes driving to Miami, for example, 
a little bit more of a breeze compared to some of the other neighborhoods where it might take you 15 minutes just to get to the highway. All right, so our next neighborhood is gonna be Birch Park. So Birch Park is actually located on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Um, some of the only single family homes down there and it's located more on the north end, kind of away from the craziness where all the tourists are, uh, closer to Hugh Birch State Park, which is a nice little park that runs, um, it's uh, one side of it's on the intercoastal, the other side of it's on the ocean, and it's a great place to go hiking, fishing, it's pet friendly. There's even a meditation garden there. So I highly recommend Hugh Birch State Park. And as far as Birch Park goes, only about 260 people live here and, and a majority, like 99% of them own their properties. Now they call these the finger streets down here. I'll, I'll put up a map so you can see why. And like I said, as far as the neighborhood goes, you're technically in Fort Lauderdale Beach, but you're away from all the craziness. So you get the proximity to the five-star resorts and restaurants and hotels, plus the beach, but you're further north away from the madness. And like I said, it's a majority of single family homes, but there is a good amount of Airbnbs here due to the close location to the beach and the fact that there's really no single family homes that close to the beach in Fort Lauderdale, besides one other neighborhood, which is not gonna make this list. We'll talk about that in another video, so make sure you subscribe. But homes here typically range in the millions. Maybe you can get a fixer upper for just under a million. And one thing that I've noticed about Birch Park is there's not too much activity as far as home sales goes. There's just, it's not a big neighborhood. And as far as proximity goes, you are right there on the beach, but there's really no grocery stores even. I mean, the closest grocery store is gonna be the Publix, which is over the bridge on Sunrise. And you're about 20 minutes from downtown, mainly because you gotta deal with that beach traffic and about 30 minutes to the airport. So location-wise, you are kind of farther away from the actual city itself, but you're on the beach. So maybe for an investment, it might not be a bad idea if you wanted to invest and have an Airbnb down there, you'd probably do great. Okay, our next neighborhood is gonna be Rio Vista, which is a family-friendly suburban neighborhood just southeast of downtown with sidewalks. Now I say that it might not seem like a big deal, but a lot of these neighborhoods in Fort Lauderdale, they don't have sidewalks. So the fact that Rio Vista has sidewalks, you know, it makes it a great place for families to raise kids. It's, it's a little more safe because yes, a lot of these neighborhoods do not have sidewalks. And quick access to the ocean makes it a desired spot for people with boats and yachts. And it's home to some of the most expensive real estate in Fort Lauderdale. Now, even though that's the case, you don't necessarily have to pay out seven figures for a home to live here. The cool thing about Rio Vista is you get all the attractions of living downtown without actually living downtown. It's located just south of Broward and east of US-1. And as far as proximity goes here, you're about a 10 minute drive to the beach, either down Las Olas or further south down the 17th Street Causeway. And you're right down uh, Federal or US-1 from the airport about 10 minutes. So Rio Vista does feature a pretty good diversity of homes, uh, even a couple condos, but the homes are ranging from uh, Mediterranean to Key West style to the modern contemporary homes. So there's something for everybody here. And about three quarters of the population does own compared to rent. And as far as prices go, you can get on the very low end, you can get a home for about 600,000 all the way in upwards of about 20 to 25 million for a waterfront mansion on Rio Vista Isles. And the one good thing about Rio Vista, it seems like the property values are always going up over here. Okay, our next neighborhood is gonna be Victoria Park, which is another suburban neighborhood, this time just northeast of downtown Fort Lauderdale. It's on tree-lined streets and the location and the proximity to you know downtown and the beach makes it a very popular place. So it is very close to US-1, just east of US-1 and north of Broward. So basically on the other side of the, the river from Rio Vista and Las Olas. And there's a variety of different grocery stores, restaurants, and then you're right across US-1 from the Flagler Village Arts District, which I've mentioned before, is kind of the hub for young professionals. It's like Wynwood in Miami or Williamsburg in Brooklyn, um, old, um, industrial area that home to a lot of young professionals, local businesses, murals, artwork, stuff like that. You're also only 15 minutes to the airport and about 10 minutes to the beach over sunrise. Now Victoria Park is also home to Holiday Park, which is a massive 93 acre park in the community with a rec center, tennis courts, volleyball courts, soccer fields, uh, gymnasium, outdoor gym, basketball courts, two dog parks. I mean, you name it, they got it. 
As far as homes go, they're pretty diverse here as well, also with some condos and townhomes. And a lot of these homes are Mediterranean style, built in like the 1930s, and we're starting to see uh, a lot more modern and contemporary and a lot of new modern townhomes being built here. So condos and townhomes typically range in the $500,000 range with single family starting on the low end about 600,000 and upwards of about four or five million for a waterfront home. And like I mentioned, we're starting to see a lot of new construction townhomes being built here. Uh, one, for example, I know that's going up is called 800 North and it starts at about 1.6 million. So in reality, Fort Lauderdale is really not a big city, but there's so many different diverse neighborhoods to live in. And I just gave you the top five according to niche.com. So it's important that you talk to somebody and let them know, hey, this is where I'm working or hey, I'm working from home. This is the style of house I like. Or if you're looking for more walkability, shopping, restaurants, whatever it may be. We got to know what you like, what you don't like, and what's important to you. So the only way we can help you find that perfect spot in Fort Lauderdale or South Florida in general is you got to reach out. Days, nights, and weekends, I got your back. Until next time.